It may not be as sexy as Gen 13, but I tell you what, this new Super Caliber 9.6 Gen 2 <laughs> is something to be admired. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona, and you're watching another great episode of Bike Showcase hey, here on Toolbox Topic. It has been a while, <laughs> Brandon. This hasn't been a whole lot of new stuff coming through. And once again, we're here at Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix with the Cool Kids Hangout and me. And I'm joined once again by my co-host Brandon Van Leeuwen because it wouldn't be a show without him. Aw. Ah, so, all that and the fact that, you know, Wyatt's at another shop these days, so we can't. And no one else here wants to be on the show. That should tell you something right there. So, but Brandon is correct. It's been at least six months since we've done a bike showcase. Yeah, here we go. Um, it's been a dry season, but we're here with, with a new the, bike. the new bike. It's the Super Caliber. 9.6, so it's carbon. It's that entry-level carbon bike, if you know the numbering system for Trek. Yeah. Gen 2. Brandon's going to tell us everything that's different about the Gen 2. <laughs> because so, that's his job. Oh, man. I love the pressure's on. Right. Okay, so they did make a geometry change for the Gen 2 this year. Okay. Which I don't know if I'm going to like just yet. Okay. Because I like my bike snappy. Okay. So the, the last... The previous generation, Gen 1, I felt was a fantastic handling bike. This one, this year, now is a little bit longer. The reach is a little bit longer. Okay. And the head tube angle is a little bit slacker as well. Okay. So they claim that this one has a better, <laughs> has better. It's a business, guys. It's going to happen. Better downhill stability. Okay. Which is fine. It's going to cater to a lot. I mean, it's going to cater to people that are different riders than I am. Right. So a broader they're, they're, range They're going to love it. Right. Um, also new for this year, besides the geometry, they also have a new strut, ISO strut inside okay. here. It used to be a Fox okay. uh, shock that was in there before. Now it is made by RockShock. Okay. It is called the Sid Lux. Sid Lux. It does not roll off the tongue very well. I I constantly forget what it's called. Okay. The Sid Lux. Sid Lux. So apparently it is uh, better, easier to maintain, easier to, to, to um, not to maintain, but to service. Okay. Um, it does have two position. This bike does have a lockout. It locks out front and back um, automatically. For so that, we can turn this the, into a full rigid. For making it into a pretty or much hard a tail rigid. or yep. whatever. Okay. Yep. So those are the those are the two big differences uh, for this year. Otherwise, it's still the same rad bike that they say kind of bridges the gap between a dual suspension, and a hardtail. Okay. It uh, certainly isn't a class of its own. I think there's a couple of people that are doing something similar to this these days, but it is a full-fledged race bike. Okay. I have a feeling that people that want it for their all-around bike might be a little disappointed if they want to take it to Sedona or some places like that. It get might the be, fuel, guys. Again, just get the truck fuel. <laughs> a little less than, than what you yeah. want, although it can, it can be ridden there. Don't, don't get me wrong. But right. I feel like I would feel a little sold short if I took it most places but right i have ridden super caliber on a race course and man it's it really truly i've said it before on our first gen yeah. it really is a truly amazing bike and it, i've yet to really get one of these out myself which i'm dying to do yeah, and it, it it rides like a hardtail it's super stiff right um, if you go over to that technology the stiffness is coming from not having any pivot points in the in the seats days right. on there so we have a super stiff rear end that if you're used to riding hardtails your whole life and you're used to hitting that bump and, and take kind of taking that little bit of jarring, this bike rides like a hardtail, but then when you hit that bump, you like, get oh, a little bit of oh, yeah. it's it's a it's a rather surreal feeling. I think I used that term last time we we um talked about the the Gen 1. It is surreal. This vocabulary is limited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to call it. I've never ridden anything else like it. Gotcha. It's really, really you see, amazing. Now I want to ride it even more. <laughs> Okay, continue. <laughs> so, uh, front to back, uh, you know, the, the, this is our basic model. This is a 9.6, 4,200 bucks. Comes with a nice drivetrain. Everything on it here is just fine. Right. But for a $4,200 bike, I always talk about the downsides. She's a pig. Right. Um, almost 29 pounds yeah. for this, for a super caliber race bike. And we'll have the weight, you know, because I know people are going to say something about it. Almost You're right. 29 pounds. So, I, well, so I'm looking, and have, I was like, where is this 29 pounds coming from? Right. Probably the wheel set. Jeez, and this wheels, right here. And yeah. But, I mean, so at this point, you have two choices, though. You can get the – what the Super Caliber doesn't actually come in aluminum, though. It does not. So you can't, like, get the 8 like you would maybe on a uh, Pro Caliber that has the flex here 
and now you're at a full XT group. Oh, well, that would have been like Excalibur, Excalibur and the aluminum versions. All aluminum versions are carbon. Carbon, yeah. So, um, but yeah, at, at 29 pounds, dude, that is. And don't get me wrong. I mean, this is our entry level. This is where we start. A fluffy kid like she's, me. She's not. She's not cheap right. for an entry level. Um, but you can go all the way up. So if you go, if you got money, right. if you got money, and you go to the nine nine, the nine nine X X A X S Gen two, that sucker's light. Yeah, she's just under twenty one pounds. Oh, that's that amazing. That thing would be nimble. But you're paying almost fifth, uh, almost eleven thousand five hundred or something. Yeah, I think it's it over eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, that's like, that's like five cruises. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money for that's, a bike. That's a that's a semester of college. That's yeah, it's a full year of college, <laughs> if, you year of college. If, if you're smart about it. So I know. right, there's a whole lot there. So there's a lot to to, to think, but there's a lot in between as well. There's there a is a lot spread. in between, but we should point out the frame from the 99 and the 96 is identical. So even if you buy this bike right here, you can still upgrade the parts as you go and eventually have a 99. You bring up a good point because when you go up that, you're at the SLR level. Oh. This is an SL. There you go. So that's where your extra money is going. That's some of going there. Nice. It's called a higher modulus carbon, so yep. they can use less material but still have the same amount of strength. Strength, okay. Also, I stand corrected. What's really cool about the SL model is that for the first time, Trek has um, internal cable routing. So you can, and the cables pop out where you want them to. How was that? <laughs> the cables pop out where you want them to. Okay. That for. For being on this side of the wall, right. we it's, love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We really love that. So uh, SLR <laughs> models will not have that because it does as, add weight to the frame, and right. they're trying to get the lightest race frame possible. So you'll have external routing on that? Uh, no, it'll be still internal, but to do that is going to require our chase chase cables. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. In some cases, maybe you have to take out the bottom bracket to, to route things. To really but route stuff. I, I'm not positive about that, but it okay. is a longer process to do internal cable routing on that. Okay. Now, let's talk about some of the features that this one has for yep. the 9.6. Let's talk about group, let's talk about travel. We have a front shock by RockShock, mm -hmm. and that is a 100 millimeter travel? 110, 110 millimeter. 110 millimeter travel, This bike okay. can be upgraded. The maximum for geometry um, compatibility is 120. Okay. If you want to throw a 120 on there, they say it's okay. Okay. Oh. Dude, that happened quick. The timer on these lights is ridiculous. And Brandon's doing the safety dance again. We haven't seen that one in a while either. Um, okay, so 110 up front. Mm -hmm. You can go 120. Right. We have uh, 80 mils in the back. 80 mil in the back, okay. Right. Which, I mean, it's not bad, it's something. It's not bad, it's, especially when we're thinking there's no pivot points in the seat right. stay. It's all going to be done by um, frame flex, right. using that carbon fiber um, at its maximum to, to achieve 80 millimeters of right. travel. It's science and engineering, yeah. as far as that goes. Um, so we have four piston brakes in front and back. Yep. Okay. And they're basic. And they're basic. Uh, Nothing th flashy. These might be two. Is it two? These are two. Oh, man. All Maybe right. Well, four in the back. Two. I don't know. No, they're twos. They're twos. Okay. Well, yep. there you go. The 9.6, you you're really, <laughs> really getting it there. And then it's a SLX derailleur. Yes, yeah, SLX. It's a 12-speed derailleur, so yeah. you're going to get all 12-speed. Right, um, but we're not seeing yeah, 1151 XT. on there. Really, the sweet spot, if you can if you can fork it out, is the 9.7. Okay. I so, think, yeah. So so what are we seeing in the 9.7 that we aren't seeing in the 9.6? About two and a half pounds less. <laughs> okay, two and a half pounds less. There we so go. So it's still an SL, two and a half pounds. Um, I personally would rather have a SRAM group myself, guys. I'm sorry. You can, you can get that. You can get the GX. I would, have the, I would get rather the 9. do the GX. 9.8 would be great, too. But these things are not cheap. Right. That's where it's... I always say the 9.8 is the sweet spot, but the, I forget what the 9.8 goes for, but the 9.8 like, are, I think the 9.8 is like close to eight grand, isn't maybe, it? Maybe, I, I don't know I don't have the price down here, yeah. you know, as far as that goes. They're not cheap. They're not inexpensive bikes. No. And I, I mean, I know you guys had requested, there's been a couple people that have requested a uh, toolbox topic bike showcase on the bikes that you and I ride. You know, oh. what exact, what are we riding? Oh. And we may do that here in the next couple of weeks so you can see. Brandon and I do have nice bikes, um, but this is what we do, you yeah. know. Now, if you're an enthusiast, like I tell people that come in the camera shop, hey, God bless. If this is your hobby and you want to dump your money into it. It's worse things to spend your money on, I right, always say. By all means, you have at it. But for a, a casual rider, you know, this one will more than do the job. It will <laughs> more than do the job, my friends. Absolutely. Um, and even then, you might be hard-pressed not to buy yourself a Fuel EX7, mm -hmm. 
or right. an eight. They've got the good right. sales on it right now. Yeah. And then you, you have to be, and stuff yeah, like you that. really have to be committed to the race scene. To this type, to yeah, this, this type of riding. I'm yeah. gonna race and I need a, the best tool for the job and yeah. this is the best tool for the job. If I were to buy this bike. Racing cross country. Racing cross country, XC. yes, XC racing. <laughs> if I were to buy this bike, I would ride this on the days where I knew the trail system I was going to, I want to go fast and I'm not looking to do that hard XC like I do mm -hmm. in the fuel. But I do everything on the fuel though right. too. I do DH on the fuel as well. So around here I'm thinking like McDowell, Pemberton McDowell Loop on this good. thing. Is, that's, that's actually where I raced this. Yeah, Pemberton, Pemberton is Loop. really good. It was amazing. Um, um, you could go to Desert Classic. It'd be a beautiful bike at Desert Classic. Well, Finns would be Browns good for Ranch. this bike too. Oh, man, Browns Ranch. Browns Ranch. Oh, yeah, Browns Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> That's Scottsdale though. It is. It's Those hard. people, I'm going to beep, beep, beep. <laughs> They're not very nice to me whenever I go out there and ride. <laughs> They assume I'm gonna mug them oh. and they treat it like it's their their park when it's really not so and everything out there is multi-use by the way Yeah, some people they're not used to your urine centric uh, Centricness I guess <laughs> Jerks anyways, but yes Brown's Ranch would be another great one mm -hmm. to do There's yep. some good stuff out at Haas Super that fast. this would work too. Okay, you know I've never been out there um so a lot yeah. of options and a lot of trail you can ride But again, you have to be committed to that style of riding correct for sure. Yep, so all right. I think so. Um, so we've got the 12 speed, you know, obviously that. Cranks, again, nothing to really write home about, yeah. but they're going to get the job they're functional. done. Totally yep. functional. Totally functional. Is there anything else about this bike that we should mention? And frame technology, I mean, it seems, I mean, you've got Kobe rims, which is nice. So we're going to have um, the Kobe carbon rims. It's going to be tubeless right out of the box. Out of the box. So you don't have to worry about that. Right. You're going to have that what I would consider now the standard options, the accoutrement for a bike like this at this price level. There's no surprises, there's no gotchas. Um, I think it'd still be cool though if they would have put a little heroin stash mm -hmm. thing right oh, here. So, right, right, but, but added they didn't weight. Added weight, so mm -hmm. I get it, and this is what I'm trying to be a 30 yeah. pound race bike, so. <laughs> and what we're talking about, you know, adding that, that, um, that little uh, stash box over there, um, you pointed out this is the one dual suspension bike that actually can accommodate two water bottles. Right. So most of them have a you know a large section that mm -hmm. gets taken up by by the uh, rear shock. This one has so integrated that you can fit two water bottles in there. You can, but let's and be honest, report. not a whole lot of people using water bottles these days are using <laughs> hydration packs. So <laughs> yeah. Again, but you can you know fit like you maybe a like a little holder for your snacks you or what you need. Yeah. You maybe two spots. you know find someone local and they could do a Kydex <laughs> holster for your pistol. Or, oh man. You know. Multi-tool. There's a lot of options for this. All right, all right. So, but not water. Rogue <laughs> Panda can make you a really great bag. I think, I think that they can cool. do whatever you want them to do. Yeah, Rogue Panda is great, guys. They're in Flagstaff, local frame bag dealer. I'm going to put their link down below. Definitely show them some love, and definitely yep. hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification mm -hmm. icon at this point if you haven't already, because we would love you for that. <laughs> um, so now, when and we might do. Um, a bike showcase head-to-head. -head. We haven't done one of those in a while. Um, maybe next week, if this bike is still here, you know, we can do that uh, with one of the fuels because I think this bike versus a fuel might be a good head-to-head -head showcase to do. You know, just to highlight the, the pros top and cons. fuel. We have a top fuel. That'd probably be a oh yeah, a top fuel. A and there is a top fuel out there. So mm -hmm. yep, that would be a good one. Yep. Um, because a top fuel now is really starting to bridge that gap with a legit full suspension front and rear, right. but the travel on it is going to be closer to what this would yeah, be. Yeah, the top fuel now is what like the fuel was a few, five yeah, years ago, four is... years ago, yeah, so. It is what it is, you crazy kids want more and more yeah. friggin' suspension. Yeah. <laughs> I remember back in the day when we had marzokis on the front and a hardtail in the back. <laughs> those were the good old days. Oh yeah, so. Proflex bikes too, let's not forget about those. Getting horrible things so all right i digress brandon is there anything else you want to add to this before we go so i'm sure we're going to get blasted down in the comments for taking way too long okay i'll say uh new tire for this year this is the the queen anne's okay on here fast looking tire i have not ridden them okay uh, but i would consider them a comparable in quality in um performance to probably a maxis icon okay it looks like that kind of tire yeah i don't know if it's enough for where we're at right now but um new tire Waiting to see how they how they perform okay. out here, and um, just looking at them, they don't look like enough for out here. But 
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, it's, it's kind of I wouldn't cool. ride these. But I mean, again, it's the type of riding that you're doing, yeah. though. Like, it's good to see Trek coming out with some new tread patterns, and they're trying yeah. some new things out. So I like that. I I'm still gonna do the uh, the Maxis, the Ardens, some something along those line, that yep. line. Yep. You know, and it, maybe you're in a narrow to cut down on the weight stuff like here. that, but that works really good on these trails. So. Yep. All right. <sighs> All right. That's it. We out. All right. <laughs> like, subscribe, bell notification <laughs> icon, my friend. It's a trifecta we love so much around here. Helps out the channel. Helps out the video. Link down below to Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. If you have any questions that you're not leaving down in the comment section, feel free to call. Follow that link and these, give these guys a call. Be more than happy to help you. Brandon's got a great team here. They're super helpful. Uh, ready to assist you on any questions you might have about this video or any of the other videos. Keep that in mind. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the devil's work, but we need it. Our other social media, follow us there. Show us some love. Day-to-day -day affairs of Get Out Arizona. Group hikes, group rides, it's a good time. And the other links are affiliate links. So if you want to leave us or follow one of those links and make a qualifying purchase, it doesn't cost you anything. We get a small commission and it helps us out with park passes, gas money, and coffee money the other trifecta we love so much around here. So at that point, there you go. And what do we say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out, Arizona. Yeah. We'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll talk to you soon. Slavista.